Oh, hello. Bonjour Vogue, nous sommes la première promotion du programme Women for Biz. Nous sommes à la Sainte-Baume, à Lofa. As I started to work with Guerlain, we spoke often about the bees and um, the commitment that Guerlain already had to the bees. And then we really started to talk about what, what could we do to improve the situation? What could we do both for the bees and also for, for women? And what would that look like? This is the center uh, in many ways. And uh, there's so much research and training Uh, being done from here. I thought I knew something about bees and beekeeping and training and I thought I understood the importance. But really, uh, when you really dig into it and you really start to learn about what, for example, we would lose, 30% of the honeybees you know, disappearing, you know, and, and had we not had the beekeepers and, and the work of places like OFA, we would lose them. What happens when we lose them? What happens when we lose them all? I wasn't a young environmentalist, right? I'm more a humanist. I've been very active in uh, displacement and the, the politics of, uh, you know, fighting against persecution. But it always leads back to environment. Even displaced people are often displaced because of the, the, the damage to the environment. My name is Aguilina Canelopoulou. I come from Greece and we're here in the center of Provence, in France, learning all about bees. Bees are the most important animal on Earth. Through their pollinating services, they offer one out of three bites of food that we eat every day. Without bees, we wouldn't have the fruits and the vegetables that we like to eat. We wouldn't have the clothes that we like to wear. The world would be completely different without the bees. Populations of the bees are declining all around the world. Different factors that play a role in this, habitat loss, monoculture, pesticides, parasites. So it's a complicated environment for them right now. Oh yeah? I have one here. And Fabien also. Grass, grass, grass. On the top of the... You see, they're pretty happy. Thank you. There's a lot of bees in this one. Oh yeah. This is a quite a healthy hive because we can see the different colors of the pollen, which means that there's a lot of different sources of flowers around in the area. So they're collecting it and you see there's different colors. There's white, there's yellow, there's orange. This is basically used to feed the baby bees and this is why it's close to, to the babies. So even in the winter, they have to maintain the same temperature for the babies to be born healthy and for the queen to remain healthy. So this is a struggle and this is one of the reasons that they connect all together in a ball. And they are around the, the babies, mm -hmm. the larva, and they stay together there to warm it up because in the winter it's much colder outside. Mm. So they keep it, they keep themselves cold in a, in a ball, in like a hug, <laughs> like a cuddle. They've been here a month. They taught me something today. I didn't bring knowledge to them. Thinking about the cycles of life, thinking about what needs to be done, participating in ways to make improvements, being together, and to sit with them and they speak often of virtue and humility and life. Feeling just in touch with yourself, making something, creating something, connecting to something, and feeling that you're contributing and being a part of something in life that grounds you even just within your own home. You could, there, are, there are ways that individuals could keep some bees or uh -huh. at least have some flowers or dedicate some part of their life or time to the awareness and the, and the encouragement of these kind of programs. Today, here, I felt, you, you felt a family. I would like to think that th programs like this will be happening all over the world. So maybe this is the bees, maybe there's the tree planting. I hope there are many and I hope they overlap and I hope it's just um, the new way we live. <laughs>